I mean, what I'm doing here? Why am I putting my life on the line? And at some point, the vehicle started speeding up behind us, and I knew I was going to fire a warning shot. Some of those guys were okay, so we were going to fire a warning shot. And uh, I realized I couldn't fire into the air. You wouldn't hear or see me do that. But at the same time, I thought I was really quick, so I ain't going to do that. But we can just see it. I was saying to myself, come on, you have to see the burning vehicle. You have to see the American shooting. You have to see me, whatever weapon that you stop. But you didn't stop. So I remember leaning over and like, how fast are you going? And she just kind of laughed and said, you don't know anything about love. Did you know that? And I remember I freaked out then too. And I was like, you do not need to go from Phil Sex to me in an hour and a half from that. We do not need to make it in 40 minutes. <laughs> and we were seriously going, I think, almost 200 miles an hour. Yeah, and I'm thinking, I'm going to have to shoot into the vehicle or shoot at the vehicle. I'm going to have to do something. So I think to myself, I know it won't get his attention. Because I was a pretty good shot. I'll put a bullet right down the center of the windshield. And uh, at about the same moment I decided I was going to do that, at the same moment I heard somebody, I don't know who it was, behind me say, shoot. And so I shot. And the bullet went in the center of the windshield, just like I wanted it to. I didn't want to hit the driver to try and get hurt anybody. Just make him stop. Uh, and the car didn't stop. It fished it a little bit and it stopped. I was like, good. You know, I messed up his windshield. I didn't care about that. You don't want him to stop and stop. But then the woman got out of the back seat and she started screaming and wailing, like, like wailing. And uh, I didn't know what had happened. It didn't occur to me, you know, what had happened. I, I thought I had to scare her or something. So I just started being really apologetic. Like, hey, you're freaking out, I'm freaking out. She's like, what is free? It, it, was, it was really funny because I heard her English was like my German. I had to think about what I was saying first in my head, and then it would come out. It would come out wrong, but it would come out to what she was trying to say. But when she was angry, just English words were coming out. They, 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 they weren't sentences, the words were, it was just words. It was just random English words coming out. And it, I could not understand what she was even trying to say. It would make her even more upset. So I just remember she swerved to the right, to the hard to avoid hearing the vehicle in front of us. And the car fished in a little bit and skidded, went up into the air, and just kind of floated off the road beautifully. Like a little over time on like wow, well, the car stopped. But then the driver and the passenger and another passenger got out and then you know, all four people got out and I realized, oh my god, I think the car was full. Can I aim in the center of the windshield? I remember when I was up on and the other soldier was really weird to hear you me is that I think you got something. And the way this woman was screaming, I was, and the way we jumped out of the car, I was like, I think I did hurt somebody. And so, I can't remember if I called out from the bank, because my first instinct was to run out there and, you know, start apologizing and seeing if there's anything I can do to help the, you know, person who was there, like, my mind hurt. And so I was calling for the medic, the medic was still working out, and the soldiers who were burned in the vehicle. And, uh, and it's my other little, you're confused, sorry, I'm confused. I try to go home and sleep on it on the bike in the morning. And she's like, she, she accepted the task and started driving again. And I just kept my mouth shut because I don't want to pull over again. And uh, at some point, I don't remember what it was, but they, they pulled the body out of the back seat. And the way they, the way they pulled him out, you know, they kind of sat around his legs and then his upper parts, you know, his upper torso was kind of like flung off the ground and everything. And then they pulled him out and everybody just stood around and looked at him. I was like, I can't watch this. I can't watch this. I didn't mean to do that. And uh, I was like, you know, I guess I went in front of the vehicle and that guy was whizzed back about me. At the time, I was like, shit, you know, I'm going to go to jail. I'm going to just shot somebody who didn't need to be shot. I didn't know that that kind of thing would just be ignored later on. 
But I ran into the rear of the car and I realized, never call me again. I was coming forward. And she couldn't get into the gate. I don't know, I heard somebody yell, they're opening the trunk, they're opening the trunk. I didn't get my business for a while because I went back to the rear of the door, the rear of the vehicle, so I didn't see what was going on. And they put the guy in the trunk and drove away. And that was it. If the guy was okay or if the guy was only wounded. Or they just throw him in the trunk, drop the trunk, and drive away. But, uh, yeah, after that, another vehicle keeps being up behind us, but my best, you know, I, I actually shot at the vehicle, but I hit the driver or the license plate of the vehicle, and I didn't shoot him to the vehicle. But the, the, there was so much confusion. I, I, I can tell you the events that happened, but I can't tell you with any degree of certainty. In what order these events happened. It was just way too much going on, way too much confusion. But yeah, that was a part of the worst days. Okay. <laughs> um, let's take the let's take the little break and we can talk a little bit about you know the other group because Basically, I really like the story you told me, um, but I don't think, I mean, it's taken up about 30 minutes, and I don't think that, uh, you know, I think it's too long. I think people's attention span is not that, not that long. So, I don't know how bad you're talking about. I'm definitely not so much, you know, looking for a political angle. Um, I'm more interested in terms of, you know, the way that experience is basically targeted to memory and the way that memories become stories <coughs> and memories become, you know, media and become recorded and broadcast and those ways. Um, yeah, I guess, um, I'll give you a call on the new Pandora channels that we have, so that's enough. Yeah. So, how do you feel about the new app? I guess it depends, you know, it depends on how you feel at the time, whether you're away and aware of everything. Sure. Can you improvise that? Mm, you need to uh, ask my dad, sorry. No, uh, I'm sure I could. I, I guess it depends on the subject, so yeah, I'm knowledgeable about it. Yeah. So I'm not trying to improvise an excuse for a word or improvise a reason why I feel like we're supposed to be. So I think we improvise on a daily basis. Alright, so let's move on. Uh, when I was a brand new teacher, like I started, it was my first Christmas that I was alone. My very first Christmas I was alone. But I had met a German girl, beautiful man, a German girl. And uh, I didn't know that she was completely, absolutely insane. She would stand on the side of the road and watch me drive past, and those kids and stuff, and some thumbs up. But you know, she was blowing kisses at us so fast that she just slapped herself in the face. It was actually pretty funny, but it was cute at the same time. You know, when you see stuff like that, you think, hey, we're all here doing a good job. But as time went by, uh, you know, the kids were a reflection of their parents' feelings. Their parents, you know, they thought we were there as so good as parents. But hey, the parents are going to say hi to them. So, she has a couple of money I says, I was new to Germany. I was saying to myself, <laughs> I can see you know, on the and they started off a really nice and warm <laughs> Um We had a really nice dinner and everything. Then we went to her place. She knew her parents go. We were hanging out there right away. She said, I want you to hurt me. And I was like, maybe she doesn't know what she's saying. That she took me into her house. You know, she was going to go to her house and get changed my gallery for you right here. And she's like, no, you're coming inside. 
So I want to sign this Christmas Day. I meet her parents, her whole family actually, this Christmas Day. And they don't seem to live in English. So now I'm like, wow, I, they're just staring at me and I don't understand a word I'm saying. They're talking to me and I don't understand a word they're saying. It's just really uncomfortable. And it's, it's night. And there's not a whole lot of lights uh, because they don't want us to know that the people who make the decisions don't want anybody to know that we're there, so if it's in the cover of darkness. Uh, we're on the landing strip. But I like other landing strips that actually revolve around them being a lot of lights, it's much dark. Uh, there's a bus there, that's several buses, and people running around trying to get back to somebody really quickly. And we're getting off the train, we're getting off the train, we're getting off the train. Uh, make sure that, you know, we're all wondering, okay, the Canada's when we got off the train, the other Canada's when we got off the train. We're all so even the high. But the weather is kind of, it's, it's night, but it's hot. It's just warm, it's really humid. And uh, even though it's dark, you can't help but start to sweat a little bit. Hey, Sam. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm, you know, so it's just the door for me. And then uh, she was like, I'm walking upstairs. I was like, yes, I like to jump out of the thing and went upstairs. She was chatting on her, some sort of internet chat thing. It was all in German, but she was chatting in English. And suddenly, she pulls off her clothes. And it was like, there's cars everywhere. And I was like, did you do that to yourself? I mean, it doesn't hurt. And she says, it's not painful at all. It just helps me to remember things that happened. You know, so that was like straight through. And then, uh, it was really love and very good time. For me, I mean, and she told me she loved me. And she showed me cigarette burn, and that was it. I started freaking out. I'm like, love, you're seriously fucked up. I'm like, how do you really love me? Like, we can go more on our first date and show me that you can burn yourself. I mean, you have got to get help. So I just caught her arms. I was like, I'm going to go home right now. You know, she drove away with her car. And she drives me back home. And she's mad and mad and mad. And, uh, you know, this one stretch of road that we were walking, started out every other day, never altered. There was no scenery. It was all sand and sunshine. And then the heat of being that long, maybe because it's hot. You're wearing all your gear. Uh, we used to joke around and say that we had a system for your casting in it because at the same time, every day, you know, that, that he was like an hour long, uh, we would start to doze off behind the wheel, or, or I would start to doze off behind the wheel, we would sleep in the back. Whoever was in the passenger seat would fall asleep too, and I'm pretty sure they kind of was asleep at the time. But usually I was just fighting a sandman. I mean, it, it was. It was an easy drive, but it wasn't an easy drive. So I've been done it so many times. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I just done dozing off. I, I hear, I, well, I see the biggest fireball I've ever seen in my entire life in front of me. And it's one of those things where you see it before you hear it. And obviously, the speed of light is faster than the speed of sound. And, uh. How do you with your mom's dreams when you're not asleep? Oh, it certainly feels like I'm in a dream. It, it does. It feels like I'm in a dream, but I know that I'm not. Uh, I guess I. I guess I. At first, I guess when it woke me up, the first time I was new in Germany, in a part of I had never been before in her car, I was afraid she was going to go crazy. And the odometer on her car stopped at 150, and I looked. You know, I knew we were fast. I looked over at the odometer. I see the needle is past the highest number. I think, what am I doing here? Why am I putting my life on the line? At some point, the vehicle started speeding up behind us. I knew I was going to fire a warning shot. So it was a Facebook case. We were going to fire a warning shot. And uh, I realized that I couldn't fire into the air. You wouldn't hear or see me do that. But at the same time, I came out of real quick. So I aimed my left hand. You would know, see it. I was saying to myself, come on, we have to see the burning vehicle, we have to see the American shooting, we have to see me, whatever that is, that you stop, but you didn't stop. So I heard her being lower, like, how fast are you going? And she just kind of laughed and said, You don't know anything about love, did you have? 
I don't know, I freaked out then too. And I was like, we did not need to be going from Phil's to communicate. So now I have to, I would not need to make it in 40 minutes. <laughs> we were seriously going, I think, almost 200 miles an hour. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to shoot into the vehicle or 